sure you already know, Aaron Wiggins is our messiah who came down and saved basketball. And to honor him, I am going to talk about, coincidentally, his really interesting prospect profile for a little throwback scouting video of how did we all miss Aaron Wiggins? He went, I think, 55 and... I don't think was really a guy on my radar at that point. It was like a real long-term NBA guy, but OKC has turned him into a valuable role player. So how could we have kind of seen this coming and what did he do? And I want to focus on the offense in this video, which Wiggins was a pretty in like totally different player in college as most NBA players are. This goes back to one of my theories about scouting that if you're going to draft players to, to be role players in the NBA, they need, they need to be more than role players in college. They have to be overqualified. And Aaron Wiggins certainly was. He was one of the primary creators for Maryland his last year, and he passed the ball really damn well. Jab steps, gets this defender up on a switch, bounce pass with the no look there. He was an audacious, ambitious passer. Like, you see a guy like Aaron Wiggins in the league today who doesn't really pass, a ton, like, doesn't have huge passing volume, not a big responsibility playmaker, but isolating, getting downhill, throwing a skip pass over the top to the weak corner. Like he was doing point guard stuff in college his last year at Maryland. And he, he could run up these curl screens and hit little pocket passes. These curl screens to me are like this spread RPO BS college offense of, of, of basketball. Like this is what like the Gary Trent's of the world and the Kentucky guards make their living off. It's like two curl screens, pick a side, play and either shoot or bounce pass and that was a, a kind of initiation that Wiggins was completely comfortable with he was like, like I said a really ambitious passer even if he could turn the ball over at times but he was always going for these windows and Wiggins was never like a great on-ball player I think it was pretty easy to fade his on-ball translation to the next level but it's not about that it's the fact that he could do it at all and function at the college level and like lead a tournament team as an on-ball player because that shows me you can scale down and do the quote-unquote easier stuff this is another like why the hell did you try that pass but also would have been epic if it got through like was, was not a great decision in the end but Wiggins was doing a lot more than he does in the NBA his handle like I said wasn't great like he would lose it in traffic but Wiggins was like a versatile scorer he'd score in the post here like post fade over a shorter defender in the mid-range like that's never something you'd see him doing in OKC these days and there were some flashes of his ability to like attack off of the catch as well smooth long strides at the end kind of a decel to finish on the left side and Wiggins like had this ability to put the ball on the floor and to make some plays. And even if he wasn't like creating a ton of space or anything, like he was asked to create an isolation, to score off the dribble, and he was able to do it at a decent level. And even though Wiggins didn't end up doing this in the league full time, those skills he picked up didn't go away. They translated to his scaled down role. And I think his shooting applies as well here as Wiggins was like a legit volume off screen shooter in college, which he just does not do in the NBA. The Thunder don't like run pin downs and stuff for Wiggins very often, but this is what he did. I've talked about the importance of volume and shot versatility for shooting projection on this channel plenty. I think Wiggins is a great case study for that as well. Like Wiggins isn't a movement shooter in the league, but I think the fact that he was before the NBA was a big boost to his shot profile because once again, he's going to be overqualified for the role that he's playing in at the next level, which is going to make it easier for him to translate. And there was some, some flashes of Wiggins signature cutting. I really do think Wiggins is one of the best cutters in the league. It's a super nerdy thing to say, but Wiggins is a phenomenal cutter, but he didn't cut that much in college or at least not his final year of college. His, his draft year, which is really interesting. And if we go and look at those draft, his draft profile, nothing like crazy popped out. Like good steal and block rate, solid, solid. It's like, you know, positive assist turnover. Okay, free throw. He took a ton of threes. That was a great thing. Super high volume. And he took a lot of unassisted twos, which is a nice indicator as well. And his usage his final year. That's really the, the, the key one. And if we look at players who kind of fit some of these benchmarks, who were tall, like, 6'5", six, 6'5"-ish, five, six, five assisted turnover stuff, and cleared a baseline threshold of, like, of usage, of responsibility. It's a lot of hits, and, you know, not everyone ended up working out and sticking in the league, but it, especially the second-round picks, a lot of these guys were in this, like, usage bucket. Sam Merrill ended up, you know, being in the league and being good, of course, as Wiggins. Um, 
Tristan Newton, who I like a lot. Jalen Wilson was solid last year. Vince Williams has become awesome. Isaiah Joe, his teammate. Dylan Brooks, obviously, ended up working out. Chris Middleton, Io DeSumo, just Malcolm Brogdon, a bunch of these guys where having usage is really important in college. Even if, like, Jay Crowder or someone like that, you're not going to touch the ball. Or Joe Harris, like, you're not going to touch the ball. So even if we kind of flip this and go with the same, like, you know, tall guys who shoot and, and make decisions decently and we lower the usage, it's a lot of the same guys but younger, but certainly not as many NBA players. And a lot of the second-round guys, like freshman Isaiah Joe and sophomore Isaiah Joe being on there are funny. But guys that just didn't really make it, who were great shooters, even Justinian Jessa, Livers, like Connaughton is, like, fringy. Tyson seems to be fringy. Crap, you know, whatever. These guys who did not end up making a huge impact in the league, Outliers like Sam Hauser are just the nuclear shooters, and it didn't seem like Wiggins was a nuclear shooter. But the role change from OKC to Maryland to OKC, per synergy here, we can see his play type frequency his last year at Maryland. A lot of spot ups, a ton of off screen work, almost 19%, and a lot of pick and roll ball handling, almost 15%. Of his stuff. As we can see, very little cutting, very little pick and roll roll man. Now we go to last year with the Thunder, it's even more spot up, way more transition, way more cutting, some pick and roll ball handler, but like way more pick and roll roll man, way less off screen stuff, way less isolation stuff. And it's clear that. Aaron Wiggins' role in college made him, to me, overqualified for his role in the NBA. And that's part of why he's such a damn good role player. And you'll see it occasionally. Like, Aaron Wiggins will bust out, like, a mid-range jumper off the dribble. And everyone's like, oh, my God, Aaron Wiggins put the ball on the floor and he did something? Holy crap. But you got to remember, most NBA players were doing stuff like this at some point in their career, whether it was high school or college or even, like, earlier in their NBA career. But now on a really great team, Wiggins is slot in as a brilliant high field off ball guy. He loves roaming in the dunker spot, catches this pass from J Dub, takes a dribble, finds J Dub down low, just a really quick decision maker, processor. Not someone who passes a ton, as I said before, but he makes really solid decisions when he does. Again, drive, kick out to Shea, dunker spot, easy finish. Like he he fits so seamlessly into the Thunder's driving kick spacing offense role replay stuff as like a low maintenance high value player you don't have to run offense for Aaron Wiggins you never have to run a play for Aaron Wiggins to get involved even though a lot of the times in college and on his prospect profile like right they were running plays for Aaron Wiggins but yet he's still able to impact and Wiggins is one of the many small players that have embraced being screeners and rollers which is such a, which is a trend in the league that I absolutely love is Wiggins weaponizes his awesome cutting as a screener and as a roller because he's a shooting threat defenses don't want to play him super tightly and he times his backdoor cuts so well okc legend <laughs> uh meets it here really just good job timing his cut off of kuminga's rotation there ends up getting wide open under the bucket to finish and he's a very efficient finisher as well just like really nice touch he's long and he can do some of this stuff off the catch and again like Wiggins isn't necessarily isolating into mid-range jumpers anymore but there is utility when he attacks off the catch crosses to get middle hop step into a little fadeaway it's very within the flow of the offense it's like read and reactive he's not necessarily running plays but you can see the kind of stuff that he did in college translating in different ways like he's not ever going to get isolation post-up touches right like the thunder never going to come down the floor have wiggins post up a guy but he will be a roll man get switched on to a mismatch and trey man and, and go to work in the post because he has that skill set this is what i mean by him being overqualified for his role and i think that's what makes great role players in the league and Wiggins, like I said, great screening, great cutting. I love how OKC is willing to use him as a like versatile screener and roller, and despite being like a six five guy, because Dagnall is, is is a sicko, and just I absolutely love him. Another example of Wiggins just perfectly cutting off of Draymond's help, timing that timing that up. Shea finds him, ends up scoring a wide open layup. Just generates so much good offense by picking spots and reading defenses, falling asleep and not being able. To necessarily play necessarily play the way they're supposed to and Wiggins is like a good enough shooter to draw attention I think if you were like, like a little bit more high volume of a shooter then maybe he could be like more of a playoffs sometimes starter deep rotation guy like he shoots like he shot like 50% from three this year on pretty low volume and defenses don't like hard close out to him but they do have to pay attention to him out there right because he is such a good shooter and this is a quintessential like Aaron Wiggins play to me here starts this play in like the the early offense guard guard screens that so many teams run in the league but 
OKC may be better than anyone. The roll doesn't work out, so he backs up into the open space and ends up cashing a three. Just low maintenance within the flow of offense. Don't need, like, this was not the play. Mark Dagnall did not draw up a play that said Aaron Wiggins is going to roll and then he's going to back up and shoot a three. This is all instinct, all feel, all reading on the fly and playing on the fly. And Aaron Wiggins is, again, I think, like, the fact that he got this development time at Maryland as a creator helped him be a better off-ball guy. As a lot of players have said, Dylan Jones most recently, my my favorite son, if you know the channel, like, being the guy helps you be helps you be a guy for the guy. You're like, being a creator at a lower level helps you know what you need out of role players, which helps you in turn be a better role player for creators like Shea and J-Dub at the next level. So Aaron Wiggins saved basketball and was a really cool prospect case as well. Another one who like, again, don't think like popped out in a crazy way, but just shows the value of like tall wings who can really do stuff and have a good enough shooting profile and actually like could take on some usage in college. And I think that's what makes these good sneaky role players. And of course the Thunder got another one, but Aaron Wiggins is the greatest.